Hello and welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker with me, Barton. We're going to jump in here. Let's see what's going on with the Six Bear tribe. Right. Hello there, Mr. Barbarian. Amiri, she has the nerve to show her face among us again. We have suffered so much, and it's all her fault. Okay, just... I guess they don't like Amiri as much as she doesn't like them. Amiri, she has the... Okay, it's the same thing. Okay. Hello. Save yourselves. It's them again. Who? Oh, there. Oh, these guys are... Okay. Skeleton champion. Okay, is that, yeah, that's them all. Okay, what the hell's going on then? As soon as you approach the camp, a bright-eyed girl in a long skirt runs up to Amiri, gives her a big hug. Amiri, you're really alive! Oh, the girl sobs and wipes her, eye, her eyes. Everyone said you were killed by the giants, but I always believed you survived, and no one ever found your body. Amiri. I miss you so much. There now, stop crying. I'm alive, alive and well. You know nothing can beat me. Here, meet each other. Nilak, this is Baroness Renee. She's something like a new chieftain for me now. Renee, this is Nilak. She, she's the only decent person in my whole lousy tribe. <laughs> Don't say that. Yes, the elders were mean to you, but you shouldn't blame the whole tribe. Having wiped her eyes, Nilak presses her hands against her chest and bows before you. I am Nilak, song keeper of the Six Spears. You must be the ruler of these lands. Forgive us for intruding into your domain, but we... Wait, really? Amiri interrupts her. You are really song keeper now? That's great. Since when? Nilak gives her a sad smile. I always wanted to be one. While you were learning to fight, I learned as legends. While you were training with the sword, I trained with the tambourine, but I was initiated during your funeral feast, Amiri. When we were saying goodbye to you and your party, as I sang at the funeral pyre, my heart broke in pain. Desna whispered to me and told me how I could turn this pain to power. Even the rocks and stones cried over the fallen when they heard my song that night. So you're a bard. Great. Me too. We should share song some songs when we have time. You can tell us what they sing in your tribe and I'll tell you about Amiri's feats. I'd like that. Nice to meet you, Nyla. May both our tribes live in peace. We... Oh. Chieftain is coming in. He's not happy, dude. An old grey-haired barbarian with a tattooed face interrupts. Nyla, who are you chatting with? Who are you? Wait. He looks closer at Amiri's face and suddenly starts to yell, pointing his crooked finger at her. You pariah freak! After all you did, you still have the nerve to come and show your ugly face here. Chieftain Nakaya, this is Baroness Renee. We're in her lands now. Please soften your heart. Maybe she can help us. The chieftain gives you a contemptuous look. A Baroness, ha! Huh? Yet another tribe ruled by tits. Ugh, fine. I am Akia, the chieftain of the Six Bears tribe, and I need you to give me this dirty scumbag. He points his finger at Amiri. Watch your tongue, chief. You are a guest in these lands, uninvited, and not particularly welcome. Quiet woman, the chiefs are talking. You think you can talk back to a warrior just because you learned to put on armor? Choose your words carefully, barbarian. You and your tribes are tribe are guests here. Guests? We'd rather be guests in Abyss than this hole. But we had to come. I'll tell you why we're here. From the dawn of time, our tribe lived by the old ways. Everyone had a place, a job to do. Men crafted and were hunting. 
Women bore children and kept their huts clean. These are the ways set out by our ancestors, and we do not change it. But then this upstart girl wants to match herself against men. She passed the warrior's initiation. She went hunting. But there's truth in the saying. Nothing good comes from a woman with a sword. Neighbor tribes laughed at us. Look, there's a second chieftain in the tribe. Soft chieftain. Girl chieftain. Must be the end of the six bears. And they were right. She brought disaster upon our whole tribe. No, I think you did. You're probably just a bad chieftain. Once a gang of giants came to our lands. They scared our prey. Attacked our huntsmen. So we decided to deal with them. We sent a group. And she went along. For a long time we waited for this group to return. Then we went searching for them even longer. But all we found were their dead bodies. Giants killed them all. Everyone except her. And then things got even worse. Have you seen those monsters? An evil spirit sends them. The ghost of a giant. He's the one who chases from our lands. He chased through all of Numeria. Even now, he's somewhere nearby. Maybe he's just over that hill. He chases us, kills our people, and always says the same. Bring the thief to me. Find Amiri. The chieftain turned to Amiri, his face red with anger. He shouts, slobbering in her face. Now you understand. That's what your dreams have cost us. You brought a curse on our tribe, pariah. Now, hand me your weapons and get yourself to the women's hut. This is your place. It always was and always will be. We'll feed you to ghosts. And maybe then he'll leave us alone. At least you'll atone for a tiny part of your guilt. Ho oh ho! In reply, I merely headbutts the chieftain's face, breaking his nose with a sickly crunch, paying no heed to Nilak's squeal, and growling in anger, she leaps upon him, punching the old man's face. The chieftain spits blood and struggles to speak. Miri grabs her sword. He realizes that a mur murder will quickly follow. Amiri, stop. Enough. He's already got what he deserves. Amiri raises her sword. Akia shuts her eyes, but the final blow never comes. Amiri sheets her sword, pushes the chieftain onto the ground and spits on him. Get lost of my sight, you scumbag. Next time I see you, I won't stop at words. I'm proud of you, Amiri. Returning the sword to the sheath and avoiding bloodshed, that is a true feat that not many are capable of. Oh, get lost. This isn't a time for your lectures. Nilak helps the defeated chieftain stand up and takes him to the nearest hut. The rest of the barbarians hurry away, hiding themselves from Amiri's anger. Panting heavily and swaying like a drunk, Miri approaches you and puts her body, her bloody hand on your shoulder. That old gold said, some evil spirit must be somewhere nearby. Let's go. We find him, we kill him. Then we make them all go back where they, they're from. I don't owe to them. Nothing. And never. I don't want to see them never again. Okay. So let's have a quick look around the place then. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, apparently the place has gotten a lot Don't smaller than it was. Hand. Oh, there he is. Hello there. Oh, Fionn. Okay. Fionn is, at least to my knowledge, it's an Irish name, Fionn McCool. So maybe this is this is the Fionn McCool, who's considered to be a great warrior in Irish name. Okay, so he's dead. Okay, so we got boots. Banded mail, and then the great axe. Okay, um, don't think the armor is all that good. Okay, but was that can't be the end of it though? There has to be more of them. No stopping now. Maybe he was just one of the giants. And we still have to get the leader. That would make more sense. There's something down there. Ah, there we go. Check.
chest. Okay, what is it? Warhammer. Okay, collect that. It's probably just something that we sell. Now, let's chat with you. That's it. We're done with your evil spirit. We cut him into pieces and cast him to the wind. You, you didn't even try to speak with him, Amiri. We've already fought and killed him many times. It's no use. He always comes back. Oh, Amiri, why do you always slash first and think later? So, what about I supposed to do? Lay on the ground for him? Let him eat me? Nyla, Amiri's right. There was no time to talk. Desna, why are you punishing me? Okay, Amiri's predictable. But what about you, Chieftain? You must realize every deal starts with negotiation. At least you could have tried. Nalek shakes her head in disappointment. Amiri, I hoped so much that after we found you, everything would be better. What should we do now? You don't like something? Come on, speak up. I can hear. Amiri bellows with unexpected anger. Nalek matches her anger. I'll tell you what I don't like. You left me. Thanks to you, I realized that a woman can do something bigger than scraping hides and cooking stew. I hoped you would become chief and be your advisor, and together we change the ways of this tribe. But instead, you just disappeared without even saying goodbye. I had nothing left but to become Akia's advisor. Who led this tribe through the whole Numeria? Who do you think? Who negotiated with the other tribes? And who lived in the women's hut all the time, serving dinner to the chief? And now we've found you. You. You ruin everything. Now the chieftain is angry. He's bound to do stupid things. And I won't be able to talk him out of it. Our tribesmen will die. Amiri. And all because you're of your itchy fists. Actually, Amiri, that really was a short-sighted move. Everyone is strategists and tacticians. So smart it makes me sick. Only a Miri is stupid one, right? Congratulations, Amiri. Now you're just like a real man from the Six Bears. You only think about yourself. You use your fists whenever you need to or not. And then you leave it to the women to sort out your mess. So that's how you talk now, huh? You want me to tell you why I smashed this old mushroom's face and why I fled? I'll tell you. Listen now, you wanted it. The war party I went with... You think we went to fight the giants? I thought that too. I was so happy. I was fool. We did not go there to kill giants. Nilak, we went there to kill me. They thought giants would eat me up. And they won't have to get their hands dirty. But I came back alive. And with this sword. I thought no one would dare to say that Amiri wasn't a real fighter. But they just laughed in my face and said that if the giants didn't kill me, the frost would. Then they left me alone in the wilderness, without food or tent. And when I understood why, when I saw what their hunt was for, it was then, for the first in my life, I felt real rage. Yes, Nilak. Don't you turn away now. Look at my eyes. I killed them all, with this sword. I'm not a chief, Nilak. I'm much worse. I'm a kinslayer. And you know what? I don't care. They deserve it. Our whole damn tribe can go to the Dragon's Maw. And me too. What? Do I deserve to die? Should I go to Dragon Maws too? No, you. This wasn't what I meant. You're not like them. I'm part of this tribe, Amiri. If you don't want to help me save, save it, you'd better leave. I'll manage without you. I'll ask the Tiger Lords for help. Amiri spits on the ground and grabs her hand in then grabs your hand in her iron grip and drags you away without saying another word. Okay, I guess we can't solve that right now. Hmm, interesting though. Okay. So what do we do next? I guess we check the journal. 
It's your chance, Pariah. Okay, we did all that. We did all that. Just nothing, nothing new for the moment, at least. Okay. After we acquire the silver step, a famous craftsman expected our settlement region. We may want to establish a settlement there and visit it to meet her. Okay, and then green stone, but we'll do that as well. Okay. Now I want to head on over this way a bit. May we have a moment of respite? Soon enough. A rest is in order. Okay, we can't claim that either, can we? No. We should gather okay, our strength. Okay, then let's begin resting. You fight good, but you're boring. A block, a lunge, all with a shield in your hand. Where's the fun in that? Just imagine, hit one in the ear, the other in the jaw, and punch the third one so hard he sees above the clouds. <laughs> For my shield, the whole party would spend all we have on healing potions. Yeah. They like cracking skulls, and I'm perfectly content with that. But you'd better let me watch your back. It'll be a lot safer for you. Exactly. Okay, let's continue on a bit. Pike stretch. Okay, let's see what this is. Or let's fight whatever's there for. Oh, okay. The oppressive silence and the sense of a looming threat were like a weight upon our backs. I began to count how many unfinished tasks we had on this side of the cell. Why must we go west at all? No one was waiting to greet us on the forge land. The Baroness gave us a sign and the whole party froze, listening for any sound. Above the splashing waves we could barely make out the creak of a bowstring and the sound of a paddle slapping the water. Pirate boats were most definitely waiting for us, hidden along the opposite bank. Uh, the Baroness shouted out, asking if there was anybody on the opposite bank. If there was a chance we might part ways peacefully. Silence reigned for a time and then an answer came from the opposite shore. A harsh and rather rude voice informed us that if we wanted to cross the river and have to pay. Last the price, everything that we had seemed rather high. Okay, well then we discussed the situation, evaluated the threat of an ambush, decided there were more pressing matters at hand. The Western Bank could wait. Okay, so then we're gonna head on this way. Okay, we've got swamp runes. I want to go check those out. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. Again, it's amazing the way you can just get sidetracked into something. <laughs> okay, let's go, guys. Gonna be lots of fun here. Okay, nothing we can interact with there. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Oh, hi there, Brocious yeah, Devourer. Uh, okay, Mary's here. This guy's gonna die. Yeah, that's right, huh? Okay, cheers for all that stuff. Okay, this is like the other place then that we were in. Don't see anything to interact with though. Looks like it goes off that way though. 
it does, but we can't. There's no check or anything to get by. So maybe it's a mystery for another time. There's nothing in here. Nobody's spotting anything. Okay, so I guess we'll return at some stage. Or maybe we won't return at all, but certainly something interesting in there, I think. Okay, so then let's go back to there. Head in that direction. And I want to go over that way. May we have okay. a moment of respite? Not quite yet. Time to search for the spot to rest. We should get okay, yeah. strength. You have your rest now. So here's what we got so far. Today, Amiri killed ten kobolds, a troll, a ho-dog, and more goblins in the fingers on two hands can count. You know, I don't think our readers are going to believe all this. But it's the <laughs> truth! I can cut them all down easy. I just need to find them. Let's go to there. Then I'm gonna come down there. Okay, another fight. We will be victorious. Strike with all your might. Okay, yeah, you guys are done. Okay, that's everyone. There was one over here somewhere, there he is. Not letting you get away, buddy. Let's get to the exit. Nice doing just a little bit of exploration over this side again. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, brown bald head, okay. Let's see what's here. Okay, well wolves to start. Oh lots of wolves. Been a while since lots of wolves have been a problem for us, though. The dead person over here. This poor lad was smashed against a stone, which when his force forever killed him, who was much larger and stronger than a wolf. Yeah. There's gonna be something really big here. Oh, lots of dead guys. There's a letter there. We'll have to read that. Okay. Bloodstained letter. Robel, you made it through selection. By this letter, I appoint you headman of the Alzar Wolves. Congratulations. We've just received new orders. Herdsmen from local villages held 
a whip round for money and hired us to kill the Cyclops that's been ravaging their herds for the last several years. There's not much money, but this is a good and proper deed. Our key advantage lies in our numbers, so we should engage the Cyclops on open ground. We can't let him hole up in his lair. Your objective is simple. Gather the rest of recruits near the cave in the Narm marshes, draw out the Cyclops, and lead him to the meadow, where our main force will surround and neutralize him. I'll brief you on the details when we meet. I'm counting on you, Captain Alazar. Okay, so interesting. Captain Alazar. We'll probably bump into him at some point. Oh, there's something else over here. Oh, this person. Okay. It is done. So they got killed by the Cyclops, I guess on the way to his lair. The only thing that would kind of make sense. Let's go check out the edges. Just to make sure that there isn't... That there isn't anything that we've missed. Pretty sure that we've cleared out everything. Okay, so somewhere around here then there's a Cyclops cave. True dragons can live up to a thousand years, becoming more powerful each year passing. Usually elder dragon basically means more dangerous dragon. Yeah, we don't want any of your dragons, thanks. Okay, so move down this way. May we have a moment of respite? Uh soonish. I'm hungry. When we stop. Okay, yeah, you can rest now then. Why don't you Once Amiri says it, Beckett. we have to listen. Everyone wants to kill us. Off their chest sometimes. Words will not bring them back. You can't help me. Accept this, as I have. Okay, continue on. That will link that up, so I'm just going to go there to do so. Then we'll come back, continue on that way. Oh, I thought we'd actually go that way, we didn't. Okay. So where was the, the other guy then? It's the it's a Cyclops mystery formed. We could go up this way though. May we have a moment of and beyond the verdant chamber. Okay, Sonny Hillock. We'll I'll certainly come and check you out soon. We're gonna have to go back I'm to the capital soonish as well. Pain, Don't blame yourself. It is my burden. Okay, and continue, continue on our way. Okay, we can skirt around that for now. Okay, nothing there, so let's send them back to there. May we have a moment of respite? Okay, yeah, and I want to go there. Let me see what's in this. When we stop. Soon. Oh, hi there. Oh, hi, Merton is stressed. Okay. If not for this distinct smell of paint, you would have thought this horse. Okay. What the hell's going on here? 
A stout middle-aged man is fighting to keep his balance on top of the creaking tower. He's terrified and sweat is running down his face as much, so it soaked his shirt through. For the sake of all gods, take me down before I break my neck. Who are you? I'm Tamrath, a paint vendor. I'd be happy to tell you the story of my life after you help me down. Uh, what happened here? Damn fan or pranks. That's what happened. They sprang from the woods, hexed my horse and cart, killed my coachman, stole my paints, then put me up here. Hold on, I'll help you. Abdar be praised, finally. 16. Okay, let's go for that. Jump, I'll catch you. Oh. Man's face becomes paler with every passing second. All right, Tamara, pull yourself together. One, two, three. Tamara tries to steady himself and prepares to jump. As he does, the makeshift tower begins to sway dangerously. With a yelp, Tamrat leaps as the tower begins to tumble down, crates falling everywhere. You extend your arms forward to catch him. Okay, we got you down, buddy. And you succeed. Struggling with the effort, you set the vendor on the ground as best you can. Thank the gods I'm saved. Thank you too. If only poor Avon was as lucky. The vendor throws a glance at the blood pooling beneath the miniature cart. Tell me about yourself. Of course, I am Tamrath from Galt. And I came, I make my living selling paints. I buy them in the city, then travel to villages in the area, selling them. Everybody wins. The peasants don't have to travel to the city, and I provide for my family. What exactly happened here? I was carrying my wares to the neighbouring village. I've heard strange stories of odd happenings on this road, but I didn't listen. The old fool that I am. My coachman Avon and I were barely halfway to the village when a crowd of fae sprang out of the woods, laughing and circling us, and wouldn't stand a chance. They started to rummage through the cart. Then, I could scarcely believe it, they began building this ridiculous tower, arguing about what they should call it. But while they were building it, one of the crates fell and cracked open, and the paints, they were fascinated by them, but they couldn't find a canvas, so they decided to paint our old, po our old poor horse should be poor old horse. Garland. They made him huge with their magic and started to colour him, each in their own way. Garland just couldn't stop rearing. He was so scared and Avon couldn't take it anymore. He loved Garland so much. Venom is silent for a moment. His face pained. Avon, oh Avon, we've been through so much together. Did the horse kill Avon then? Long story short, Avon broke free and tried to drive the Fae away. That's when Garland fled. The Fae were ready to kill poor Avon when he, where he stood, but the woman who led them proposed a joke. Instead, before I knew it, they put me on top of the tower so it couldn't disturb them. And then they stuffed poor Avon into the cart with the remainder of the boxes and then shrunk the cart. Tamrit swallowed, but not Avon. So how did they call this... Tower of Tamrath. The vendor winced. Temple of Solitary Contemplation. Where can I find the Fae who did this? Suddenly you hear branches rustle and the noise from the nearby bushes becoming louder and louder. Help! Oh, hi there. Okay, two of them. Three of them, oh god. It's gonna be tough. What for Gorum? Okay, well, let's get to it. Now. Need you to go get that Stay one. Behind me. It hurts when we fight. Not that difficult. Which is good. She's not gonna be happy though. Near it, from the hill's summit, a slim and miniature woman with dark hair and pale, almost moon-like lit skin 
is regarding you curiously. There is a light smile on her lips, but her eyes are like the cold depths of an ocean. Judging by her appearance, she can only be a Nereid. Or Nereid? So that's who spoiled our fun and killed the Guardians. We left to watch over our new friend. We didn't invite you to participate in our game, but still you intervened and ruined everything. Why? There's nothing amusing in making others suffer, can't you see that? Suffering comes and goes. If someone played a trick like that on me, I wouldn't hold a grudge for long. Though I'd repay the giver with a joke of my own. The only thing of value are those able to leave a mark. Okay, um... The things you've done cannot be justified. What did these poor souls do to deserve the suffering you put them through? The only thing that cannot be justified is a brute who destroys something she didn't build, that starts to lecture and preach until the listener, me, is bored to tears. Now enough talking. Okay, so this is going to be a proper fight then, I guess. Okay. Okay, so... You guys need to move over here. Okay, then let's get you to give a little bit of healing. Okay, and... Is that it? Okay. That wasn't too difficult. She didn't have much, did she? What with these guys? Well, I had stuff. No stopping now. Thank you. I dare to imagine what could have happened to me if not for you. Please, take this as a sign of my gratitude. Okay, well, cheers for that. Now yeah, we're going to have a look around. Especially up here where they were. March on. Okay, no secret stashes over there. And then, let's quickly have a check on the other side of the road. Onwards. Okay, nothing there either. Okay, well let's leave him there then. Time to search for the spot to rest. Okay, so we're gonna go to there. We should gather our strength. Guy Chazer de Lambert was a woodsman not unlike you. However, he favored dual elven curved blades instead of the bow. Belloc Nor was his fellow arch knight, and he was an expert marksman. It is said that he could shoot the wings off a scourge at a hundred meters. Wow. Minotaur shit. Even if he was that good with a bow, why not just kill the scourge? <laughs> Okay, let's continue on. May we have a moment of respite? Okay, now we're going to start heading back to the capital. A rest is in order. 
Okay, yeah, let's have a rest. You can fight. You aren't afraid. I have seen this. So why do you avoid fighting? Because every battle, win or lose, is another defeat. Every death is another soul that will never come to repent and be forgiven. Have a moment of respite. Soon enough, yeah. I'll be around here. We should gather all strength. Your faith makes you so vulnerable. Aren't you afraid that evil people will take advantage of your peaceful disposition and hurt you? Hardly. My vows and faith are a strength, not a weakness. But if evil is done, it won't be my doing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this should get us back. And then enter. is back. One phase be awkward silence. Balkan search. Okay, same thing. Uh, potion of Sheila Dawn, potion of greater visibility. Um thank you. That would prove useful. You may go now. Okay, here's the dude about the roads again. Dragon bows in the waist and addresses you ceremoniously. Greetings, Your Grace. By position, if a worthy ruler is patron to a master, the master gives generously in return. I have come to honor this tradition. Please accept this. I worked hard on it. Hope it serves you well. Thank you for your gift. It's a pleasure to work hard for such an honorable lady. Okay, and then that's that for now, okay. Let's quickly have a check in here. So we failed the cheap publicity, okay. And let's go to events. Okay. Bay magic problem sorted. Okay, fail that. We fail that, which is a problem. And we got that done. Okay. Trade agreement is signed. Now. Master Pain. Traveling interrogator and executioner. Priestess of Zone is offering her services to the Baroness. Half Elf is certain that there is much to learn from the Baron's Hamans. Kesson seeks to protect the Barney's subjects. Okay. Just three stability if successful. Let's make it 80% then. Okay. Ancient tradition. Plus three loyalty. And then high society wedding plus three to community. We'll do that. Okay. Projects. Let's put you in there. Uh, Start that project. Can't do that. Can't do that one. Can't do that one. Could do that. Support the treasures. Yeah, let's see that. Okay, start that. It's going to take 14 days. We're going to have a whole bunch of new things to deal with. 
Okay, so that was successful. That failed, even though we tried to make it better. Stability is potentially a problem. Okay, disaster. The regent so obviously lobbied for his own interest while organizing a wedding that both families dropped the idea. Okay, not good. That worked though. Plus six loyalty. Okay, and success there. Success there. Okay. Then we have two extra events. Treasure requests your attention. And then River of Gold. Let's do that. Okay. And other. Let's start you on that. Let's start Tristian on that. I don't think I'm going to do, be able to do any of those. Economy. Okay, you'd have to be available for that, and we need a lot more stuff as well. And Amiri needs to be in all of these ones. So we're not going to do that at the moment. I'll find something for a lander to do, though. Yes, there isn't anything for him to do. Okay. And let's go see who wants to talk with us. It is Lander, isn't it? Or no, it's probably Joblist. Yeah. I brought a petition with me. Lamar Tinch, a famous expert on everything regarding alcohol and the beverages which feature it. Our impatient guests wanted very much to speak with you in person and tell you all about his... Um, Project. Okay. The halfling before you looks young, but his sharp eyes, framed by slight wrinkles, gives away a petitioner's considerable age. Lamar nods politely, sweeping the floor with his beret and showing off an emerging bald spot. My respects, Baroness. I beg your forgiveness for how boldly I sought our meeting but I could hardly trust anyone with the fate of my beloved new child, which appeared to, to me in a waking dream as I walked your lands. You see, I was traveling through on my way to Bravoy, when to my surprise I discovered a most curious detail. It turns out that many spicy and bitter herbs, which I and my colleagues use in our work, grow wild in these lands. Wineberry, goatsweed, gentian. Neymar bends his finger, enumerating the plants, then waves his hand. Ah, these names probably tell you nothing, but to me, oh, for me, this rich list is like a splendid palette, the foundation upon which a true masterpiece might be built. Your Grace, I once imagined settling in Bravoy, but your lands have truly inspired me, and now my greatest dream is to open a shop in this very capital, with a, with a bouquet you can easily gather nearby. I can easily create a new beverage, true ambrosia, for any half -life. Only one thing is holding me back, lack of financial resources. I hope that now, upon hearing my request, you and your respected treasurer will not refuse a humble artisan, a little assistance, of course, in exchange for a future percentage. Lermar bows deeply once again. I shall eagerly await your decision. Okay, I think we should support. Do you want to hear my, do you want to hear my opinion? This business of fail. Halfling alcohol is like fruit juice for the other races. It's nothing like your dwarvish stout. You want to take a risk and put your money on halfling drunkards. Well, it's your Barney and your business. But remember, if you get a trader the money he asks for, then tomorrow there will be ten more at your gate just like him. Uh, I want to support him, but I don't want to undermine Jobless, so you're the treasurer, so solve this dilemma yourself. If you thought you might change my mind by inviting me to decide, I'm afraid you were mistaken. I shall refuse Lamar's request straight away. Okay, you do that. OK. 
Hey, Varkas, Varkas, Mac. Your Grace, I come bearing gifts, a sign of my gratitude for taking an old man into your service. With such weapons, you can go on raids. Okay. Uh, thank you. Keep it up. Not sure what to do about him, though. Or his... Well, really his... Um, whatchamacallit? His request. Okay, so we succeeded in that. Then we have a project here, support the treasurer. But he's doing something already. So we can't rank anything up just now. Okay, so I think that's where we're going to finish that one. Hope you have enjoyed. And I hope to see you all next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button there on the right and check out some other videos here on the left.